Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to paint some Minotaur Chapter Space Marines. Now the Minotaurs are a Forge World derived chapter and I'm going to show you how to paint one today as I noticed that there's not really that many tutorials online. If you'd like to see other great Space Marine tutorials such as how to paint Crimson Fists, how to paint Blood Angels, how to paint soul drinkers and even though I don't have a tutorial for that teal marine over there I'm constantly trying out new schemes and uploading new videos for you to enjoy so feel free to check out my other videos for more great tutorials if there are any specific space marine chapters or techniques you would like to see please comment below and I'll do my best to make it happen the first paint you're going to need is warp lock bronze and a standard brush such as this one because it does not need to be any sort of fine detail at this point I'm just using one of my old, um, more pre-loved brushes. All you want to do with this is basically apply a thin smooth layer across all the armor panels. That is everything except the shoulder pads and the uh, bolter, as well as the bolter housing. This is going to be the base layer for all the armor panels that are going to be bronze. Your finished result should look something like this. Next you're going to need lead belcher. With this paint, all we're going to do is go over all the metal parts of the model, such as the bolter and any sort of skull iconographies around the back. If you desire, you can also use this on the uh, Aquila on the chest um, in order to make it stand out from the bronze armor color. However, I am going to be doing a gold as I'll show you later on in this tutorial. The finished result should look like this. Next you'll need a Grax Earthshade, which is basically just a brown wash, so any sort of alternative brown wash will work just fine. All you want to do with this is go over all the parts that you have painted bronze, taking care to try to get the wash to pull into all the recesses in order for, the, for it to dry darker and leave a dark outline for the layering to come. Once it is dried, it should look something like this. Next you will need Null Oil, which is basically just a brown wash and all you use this for is to paint over all the parts that you have painted silver previously such as the bolt gun and any skull iconography and if you have painted the Aquila on the chest silver, this would be used for that as well. The finished result should look around about this. Next we are going to need some corn red and we are just basically going to use this as a base layer for the shoulder pads and the bolter housing. From what I've read, the Minotaurs, only the veterans have both shoulder pads as red. Uh, traditionally the shoulder pads are gold as well. However, just to break it up today, I thought I'd show you how I would paint the shoulder pads if it were a veteran as well, seeing as I'll be showing you how to paint the gold regardless. The end result should look something like this. Next we are going to need Caribou Crimson and this is going to be the wash for the shoulder pads and the bolter housing, anything you have painted red. Once again, much like the armor, please take care to try and get it to pull into all the crevices to really get that nice dark outline for layering later on. The finished result should look something like this. Next we will need Brass Scorpion which we will use today as the layering for the armor. This color is actually really really nice, uh, if you let it sit for a while it goes red but once you apply it, it becomes a really really nice brassy color as you'll see here. Basically just apply a thin smooth coat to all of the armor panels, anything that you have painted warp lock bronze previously. Taking care to leave the darker outline in the recesses created by the wash as mentioned before. You might need a few thin layers in order to get a smooth result, however as you can see it is very very striking. Next we're going to need Mephiston Red which we are just going to paint on all that we've painted red before such as the shoulder pads and the bolt gun housing. It is important to make sure that this is a very very thin and smooth layer so you might want to mix it with some water or medium as I will show you later on. A few coats of this to get it nice and smooth and it'll look really really good. Take care to leave that darker edging around the or the darker line I should say around the recesses as created by the wash which I mentioned before. The end result should look something like this. Here is the flow medium that I prefer to use. There are many different mediums out there such as glaze mediums, 
Um, however, the flow medium I find works really, really well. And I'm going to show you here how I use it to mix the red on the shoulder plates. Here you can see that just below where I've put that paint down there is the previous red we were working with, Mephiston Red. And I've just added some Evil Sun Scarlet Red, which is the lighter one up, and have begun mixing them. In a second I will hold it closer to the camera so I can show you what I mean as I add the mediums. A very, very important note when working with mediums is if you are working with clear mediums, it will not affect the pigment, or it should not, I should say, affect the pigment of your paint. However, as you can see, the medium that I use is white, and as, as you'll see from mixing it up together, it does take the overall shade, I should say, it does take the overall shade of the uh, paint up a notch because it is white, it does change the pigment. So it is important to note that the more paint you add, the more medium you will require in order to get a smooth layer. And if it is a white medium in this case, the lighter it will also become and further away from the original intended color. As you can see there, it is quite nice and thin, but it is a few layers lighter. Here I've gone ahead and I've added a second drop because I found that it was still a little bit too thick. And right there you can see what I was talking about when I say that it does come up quite a bit the more medium you add if it is white in color. However, uh, if you understand this, you can, uh, you can pretty much compensate for it by adding not quite as intense of a lighter red to go up to the next one or simply by using the medium to lighten up the red. Now using this technique you can either apply a whole new red layer to the shoulder pad to give it to, to just to bring it up really another shade. However what I'm going to do for the purpose of this tutorial is just to add a little bit of source lighting in the sense of lighting the shoulder pads where the sun would hit it just to give it a bit more depth. In this case that would be the round tops of the shoulder pauldrons as well as uh, around the bolts around the top and also just around the side just to give it some depth. As you can see there I've just painted uh, two smooth ovals on the tops of the shoulder pads and gone around the bolt housing just to give it some depth. Once this does dry it does dry quite smooth and as you can see it does raise the pigment right up there where the sun would hit. Next we are just going to go back to uh, Lead Belcher and add a very thin smooth layer to all the metal surfaces, once again taking care to leave that darker outline. Next we are going to need Retributor Armor to paint the Aquila on the chest. As mentioned previously, you could have done the silver because it will stand out quite a lot more. However, I think it's supposed to be gold uh, by the traditional colors. Basically, all you're going to need is just a fine detail brush and you're just going to need to go over all the, I guess you could say feathers in this case, of the uh, winged aquila on the chest. Next, grab some Liberator Gold. I really like this color. As you can see, it's the perfect blend between silver and gold. I really, really like this color. And it also makes the perfect edge highlighting for the bronze armor in this case. Uh, all I'm doing here is just using a fine detail brush just to go ahead and go over all the edges of all the brass armor. It just adds another layer of highlighting and really does step up. Um, I guess you could say step up the armor to the next level in the sense that it's not so flat anymore. As you can see here, it's added a bit of depth and it really does, really does show. Next we will need some Evil Sun Scarlet and we are going to add some uh, fine detail highlights, much like we did with the armor, to all that we painted red such as the shoulder pads and bolter housing. It is really the same process, just by running along the edge outline a very thin layer of this color. Um, however, I find that it still really is worthwhile if you do leave that darker outline there and simply put the thin layer on the inner side where you've painted the lighter red. Here I've gone back to the base uh, corn red which we originally used in the beginning to put down the base layer for the eye lenses. All it is is a fine detail brush and just a really thin smooth layer on the eye lenses. Then we're going to jump back to Caraburg Crimson, which as I think I mentioned before is just a red wash, and just put a dab into each eye lens. All you're really going to need this for is just to give that uh, darker outline around the edging. Next jump back to Mephiston Red and with a fine detail brush, just a really thin layer uh, over the middle of the lenses just to bring it up another level.
then jump back to scarlet red and just put a thin stripe or a thin layer across the top of each eye lens just to add another layer of depth. Just the thinnest layer right near the top by taking care to leave that darker outline created by the wash. Finally grab some scar white and just literally a dab into each lens. This helps to create the illusion that the sun is reflecting off each lens. Finally grab some mithril silver which is just basically a light silver if you're using a different set of colors and just go over and do the edge highlighting of all that you painted metal. This is really an extra step but it takes only a few seconds and it really can make all the difference on the model. And here we have the finished result. Thank you so much guys for watching. Please do comment below and let me know which chapter you would like to see or what technique you would like to see and I will do my best to make it happen. Uh, hopefully this video has helped you. If it has, please comment below and let me know how it has helped you. It is, I'm always happy to hear how people have progressed. So thanks again for watching guys and stay tuned.